Today I'm going to show you how electronic all-wheel drive works. Now hybrid vehicles don't have a drive shaft coming down to the back here. Instead they use a separate electric drive unit. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop down the subframe and let's remove it. And it took some effort but I finally got the subframe removed from the vehicle. I just got to take out the differential. Now front wheel drive hybrid vehicles, the eCVT transaxle powers the front wheels. Now the vehicle does not have a transfer case or any drive shaft coming to the back here. It's all done through electronics to give these rear wheels a little bit of traction when you need it. It's not a primary means of propulsion taking a quick look around here looks like we've got some electronics the casing itself has fins for cooling there's no active cooling over here we've got a three phases for our big high voltage wires that go in to power the electronic motor the electric motor is called MGR by the way this little transaxle is out of the back of a 2006 Lexus RX 400h that I'm tearing apart and it's actually one of the first vehicles to have e all-wheel drive so the first step in this is how this is popping out the axle flanges there you go First thing I'm going to do is start by removing these connections. Yeah, comes out as three terminals. Now I'm going to go ahead and split the transmission case. Just pull this cover off. Oh, it's so tiny. Now as you can tell, this thing's not meant to carry too much torque for a long period of time. Kind of noisy. Oh, I can pop this off. Oh, you can see it's pretty grummy inside of there. This was sitting outside in the rain, so I can't blame the vehicle. Pop this out. This one's also a little grummy. Very small and simple counter gears. Now, as you can tell, this thing has transmission fluid inside and does not have gear oil. When you're doing a transmission fluid service, this would be your fill plug and that would line off with the transmission seal and the output. And this would be your drain plug at the bottom here. So you always want to have fluid about this line here. You never want to overfill it because it can just leak out the seals. All right, let's make some mess here and turn this over. Let's flip this over and take off the other side. All right, since these bolts are kind of crusty, I got my grandfather's toothbrush here. I got to clean the bolt heads up. All right, I broke them all free. Do it. So it looks like one of the wires go inside here for a temperature sensor, and the other one comes here for the resolver. And inside of here, we have the stator, which is stationary, and the rotor, which has the permanent magnets, and that actually moves. Let's see if I can pull this out. It takes an incredible magnetic force. I finally got the rotor to come out of the stator. Let's just pull out the stator here. And here we have the stator removed. You can see inside of this mini transaxle here, we've got a lot of transmission fluid. Some of it is actually quite dark, which seems to me it's probably the original fluid. This had 411,000 kilometers on it. Now the fluid is there to help with heat transfer between the motor segment as well as the casing, which is made of aluminum, which is a great heat conductor. So here's a comparison between MGR from this differential and MG1, which is in the front transaxle of this vehicle. Now MG1 is the smaller of the two and does mostly starting and generation rather than actually propelling the vehicle whereas MGR is going to propel the vehicle only when traction is limited in the front it will send power to the back it doesn't really do much in terms of propulsion maybe a little bit on acceleration but overall you can see that this rear transaxle is quite under designed it's really just there to put an e all-wheel drive sticker on the back of your vehicle here we've got MGR represented by the rotor and that's going to turn this shaft here which is then going to turn a counter shaft and then the final drive so if I plug this on here and I start rotating it you'll see that there is definitely a torque multiple multiplication or a gear reduction and this has to spin many times faster than the rotation of the wheel. The rotation of the wheel is represented by this axle over here which is plugged into the differential. So one rotation of that is one rotation of the wheel. Now fitting over top this rotor is the stator which sits inside of the other side of the transmission casing. Now the rotor has many different magnets inside and they're facing north to south. So you'll see if I take this pencil here, as I drag it across it's kind of jumpy as it moves from north to south poles. So it's only attracted to some of them. And that's key to how this works. Now on the stator we have three different windings here which correlate to three separate sets. Every third one is going to correlate to one of these and so forth. Now because that rotor has magnets with poles on it, let's say it's north pole, you can energize this to become a south pole. This core here will attract it. Then you energize the next core here and that's going to attract it as it rotates. And then you energize the next one and that's going to rotate the rotor slowly as it goes all the way around. Now we have multiple little cores inside of here which gives you a nice resolution so you can move the motor very slowly but you can get lots of torque output and that's pretty much how these AC three phase motor works it just keeps moving to the next pole over and over it's controlled through the computer's high voltage control system and if you want to learn more about how that control system works and the inverter check my previous video linked above now speaking of control systems here we have the resolver and it's got little cores with windings going around it and it's going to sit around this oval shape here that's pressed onto the rotor so as that's rotating it's going to create a different electromagnetic field 
controlled and that's gonna be sent out to the computer so the computer knows the direction and the speed that this motor is turning at. Now an electric vehicle operates on the exact same principle that you see here except on a much larger scale. This one here has passive cooling with just fluid sloshing around inside of here to lubricate and to keep the stator cool. It's got a little temperature sensor to monitor it and you gotta make sure that you don't undercoat these fins underneath the vehicle because it just relies on passive cooling. Now I know a lot of you guys out there like to collect these to make little go-karts so you can get away from the wife on the weekend and I don't doubt you because it's pretty simple all you need is really a three-phase controller to control this motor and you can adapt it to any machine like that. Now make sure you support me on Patreon and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.